Hey everybody, so I was asked what type of uh, mini bike I'm gonna get for myself being an adult. Um, that's questionable. Uh, and so this is what I decided to go with is the, uh, the BT200X by Coleman. Um, so the thing about this, it's, it's a much larger frame than your 100. Much bigger tires, much bigger motor, 196 cc. You got your front suspension, you got a headlight. Um, the controls are the same from the 100 to the 200. And correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe right here is a mount that you can add the 200 rack to it. I'm not really sure. I think I might be able to add the rack to this, the back rack. So that would be kind of cool. I, I would like to have a rack so when I go out with my boys, I could throw like a bike bag back there um, or even a soft-sided cooler that you could pick up from Walmart and throw some tools in there and bungee cord it on or whatever, you know, just, just to have some tools. Uh, but today we're going to go ahead and put this thing in service, meaning uh, we're going to add the oil. I'm going to show you guys some cool little gadgets that will help you along the way with your mini bike life. Um, just things that make it a little bit easier for me and I went and I picked up some new uh, items yesterday at the auto parts store. So any auto parts store by you uh, will be able to work. So let me go ahead and get those items and I'll show you what they are. And uh, while I get those items, you guys can check out this really cool button. noise in the background my neighbors um, doing a uh, he's weed eating his yard for like the first time in ever I think since they lived there uh, so a little bit of noise in the background I apologize for that but uh, right off the bat one of the easiest things that you could do at your auto parts store is get yourself one of these funnels that are graduated with their marks okay it tells you how many ounces you're putting in here so right here you got four ounces it also crosses it to milliliters, so if you use milliliters, there's 100 milliliters, 200, whatever, right? And then uh, right here, half pint, pint, one and a half pints, and a quart. So you can put your oil right in here, and it's got this little thing where it says on and off. So if you turn it this way, the oil will stay in here, and you've got your tube, and you've got your cap. Line up your hose, and then all you do is twist it to open, and the oil is going to flow out and into your engine and it's going to be the perfect amount and it shall make no mess. The other thing is an easy drip pan that will fit under, a low profile drip pan that will fit under your bikes, under your mini bikes, whether it's the 100, the Monster Moto MB80, um, MB80, uh, or this bike. You can slip it right underneath, on the other side be easier because it takes damage. You can slip it right there and you can break the bolt on the back of the engine on the bottom there and the oil is going to drip right on in. This motor actually has an extension tube already built in to help with the draining. And then when you're done, you get yourself one of these nice little cans and you can pour that drip pan now right into this, seal this up, 
and take this to your local auto parts store or whoever recycles your used oil. All right, so that was three really cool uh, little items or tools, if you will, uh, to help make your mini bike life a little bit easier. Um, the next thing is, if you're like me and you're active with your kids and now you have multiple mini bikes, you know, on a weekend you're gonna be doing multiple oil changes. So instead of buying two, three, or four quarts of oil and stocking them on your shelf, if you just go ahead and buy this right here, this is gonna be five quarts in one, it's five US quarts, 4.73 liter. So if you buy this right now, uh, this will get you all through your riding season, pretty much for your two or three bikes. It's nice to have because you're always ready to do an oil change or add oil as needed. And these little motors need their oil changed often, all right? They're not, they don't have filters, they're not like a car, all right? This, this oil and these little China engines, they need their oil changed often. Next up, we'll go ahead and service this engine oil and get this thing cranked up. Okay, so the engine oil goes right here in the front of the engine. There's like a little dipstick here. Um, when you check your engine oil with these little dipsticks, don't screw them in. Just set it like this and then check it. And as long as you've got oil on your hash marks, you're okay. These engines have a, a rod that goes to the piston and then bolted to the rod. Well, the other end of the rod, I should say. And then, you know, it mounts to the crank. Well, there's like a little thing that comes down. It's like a spoon or a splasher. And so as the engine's spinning, um, and spinning, 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 that splasher's going down into the oil sump. That's, that's the way these things, and it splashes oil all over. If you are low on oil, that spoon or splasher or whatever you want to call it isn't splashing into the oil far enough down, and so you're getting thin oil coverage in your engine and your moving parts aren't getting lubricated properly. That's why you want to make sure you definitely have proper engine oil uh, level. So like I said, this has that little clip that you can take off, and so this is basically just going to fit in like that all the way in. So all you gotta do now is fill up your oil to the 20 ounce mark. And there's 20. So now all you gotta do, holding this up so it'll flow, is go ahead and open it. And you'll see the oil go down the tube. See the oil going down the tube? Kinda going slow here, but I just want you guys to be able to see it. And then you can just open this all the way up. I got a little kink here from it being a brand new hose, the way they had it packaged, or wrapped up I should say, really slowing things down. All right, we got, uh, we're down to eight ounces. We're flowing pretty good. We're going down to four ounces, I'm gonna slow the flow because we're getting pretty full down there. So we got about two ounces, slow in the flow. Hopefully it doesn't overflow. I don't have the bike sitting level. I have it leaning a little bit. I got a little bit of dripping going on right now. Seems like we're almost overflowing it because we're, we have the bike not sitting level. And that's level right there. Now, when you put your new oil in and you fire up your bike, run it for a little bit, maybe after, I would say, I don't care what the book says, I'd say after maybe two, two and a half hours of riding, having some fun, trading the bike back and forth with your friends, maybe a tank of gas at the most. Change the oil, get the shavings out, all right? Everything's new, everything's breaking in, get the shavings out, change that oil. A Little bit, not too bad. Hold this up, cap it. Man, we're not doing too bad. Seems like it's a little over full at 20 ounces. But you know what, once we fire it up and it spreads the oil around, it'll be just fine. Here's this little thing, keep bugs and dirt and stuff out. There you go, 
I mean, that, that wasn't bad. All right, for argumentative sakes, if you bought this in bulk and you were trying to do this with a funnel, can you see how this would be kind of difficult? So that little hose thing, you really did make a difference. Um, the gas that I use, the fuel, I use ethanol free uh, gas, which is also known as marine gas. So depending on your area, um, I highly recommend when it comes to any of these small engines, two cycle or four cycle, especially two cycle. Use the ethanol free gas. It's a little bit more money. It's about a dollar more a gallon, but I promise you it really makes a difference in the performance um, of your engine and, and the uh, longevity of the carburetor, the seals and the fuel lines and stuff like that. Especially the smaller engines, the smaller motors. They really struggle when you give them crap gas and ethanol in your gas is crap gas. It's just crap gas. <laughs> This is painted, this is not car, uh, powder coated. I wish it was powder coated, but it's not, it's painted. Uh, you could always do a project with your children and uh, take, the, you know, take the components off this frame and take the frame and go get it powder coated. Nothing stopping you from doing that. That could be a pretty good time actually, you know, yellow or something. Fuel tanks right here on top. Got a little fuel filter in here, little screen to help catch debris. Leave that in there. All right, before we go too far, I want you guys to see something here. This is the front wheel, and you see how this was assembled? See that space right here? It's actually a space right there. Let's see if I can get this thing to work here. And then on a nut side, where the nut is, the nylock nut, look at this space. So this wheel's not even tight. All right, they never tightened it down on the axle. That could cause a problem. So please, people, please, before you put your child <laughs> on this or yourself, on any of these little mini bikes that are assembled already at you know your tractor supplies, your Walmart, Sam Clubs, Costco's, Outdoor World, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, wherever you get these from, uh, if they're already assembled, they're not assembled correctly. That's the attitude you need to have. And that's not a knock or a dig on any company, but assume as a parent or as the rider that these bikes are not assembled correctly. And just look them over, make sure everything is safe, put a wrench on every bolt that has to do with your steering and your braking. This bike comes with drum brakes. This is your adjustment right here to make it tighter so it engages sooner. There's your oil drain I told you about right here. Put a wrench on this to hold it and Crack this bolt right here and your oil will drain out into a drip pan without contacting your frame and making a mess. Pretty nice. And another tip. Go to the store, hardware store, get yourself some zip ties. Even Walmart sells these. Have some zip ties handy. Make sure that these, all your cables are close to the frame and not sticking out like this originally was. That's going to catch tree limbs and stuff like that and you don't want that to happen. Get it nice and close to the frame. Check your steering to make sure you don't hinder your steering. Leave your slack for steering. Air pressures. Put about 10 pounds in each wheel. A little harder makes it a little bit easier for it to roll. A little softer makes it a little bit softer for your suspension. All right, these soft tires go, go with about 10 pounds in each tire. I believe you can go up to about 15. I know on the little bikes, you can go to 15. All right, man, here we go. How exciting is this? You got your choke right here. So this is a cold start uh, of the day. So choke will be on. Once it's running, you turn it to the off position. So choke will be on. Probably gonna take a few pulls for it to get started. Don't be discouraged. It's a brand new engine. We need to get the fuel primed in, everything good to go. One thing I didn't check was the security of the spark plug and the spark plug boot. So let me go ahead and check that right now. Is make sure that the spark plug is installed into the engine appearing to be tight 
and the boot on, okay? Um, looks like everything's okay there, spark plugs right there. And that's easy to swap out too. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. You got your kill switch here. Turn that on. Everything's ready to rock. I don't know if you guys can see the chain through there dancing, but the chain's dancing. It's a little loose, but it's not too loose. Um, after this ride, maybe another ride, just playing around with it, uh, we'll drain the oil, a different video, but we'll drain the oil and uh, tighten that chain. I'll show you guys how to do all that and adjust the brake to make sure everything's good. But for right now, we still take this thing for a ride. This thing has pulling you when you just go full throttle. It just launches. Watch this. It gets up to speed really fast. Very impressive how much power this thing has. I think a lot of it has to do with the jack shaft, of course, the gearing. Let's go for a little ride on the uh, trail like whatnot. My body weight on the CT100, I wasn't really able to ride at a slower speed here because it was really dragging. The low ground clearance, the frame was kind of rubbing the tall grass, the smaller tires didn't want to get me over the taller grass. Um, I cut a path here with my mower to make it a little bit easier, but still, Big difference, really had to use a lot of throttle just to go at a slow speed. Well, let's just go for a little ride here. It's about three quarters of a mile. It's a big difference. I'm barely cracking the throttle and I'm rolling with, with ease. land back here. Absolutely a pleasure to ride this 200 through this little trail area.
wanted to just give you an opportunity to look at it. It's just, I cut a path with my riding mower through the county land here. This is the creek, and that's private property. So over here, you're safe. They mow this with big tractors. But this goes all the way up, all the way up to uh, 17, Highway 17 there. So it's a fun little trail that, you know, you could just mess around on something like this and then way back on the other side of my house is an area where you could play um, and I got video I got video of me and my boys doing figure eight racing um, last weekend I'll link to it up here pretty cool but yeah what a what an absolute pleasure this thing is really doing a great job serious ground clearance I mean that's a good 10 12 inches of ground clearance right there nice fenders fancy looking fenders front suspension anyway so that's the BT 200 X we went ahead we put it in service we added oil we added fuel took a little tour of it real quick found some loose bolts we tightened up on the front forks there made sure it was safe very powerful very fun uh, it's about close to 600 bucks depending on where you buy it after tax close to 600 bucks uh, a little bit below whereas the 100 is going to be close to 400 bucks depending on where you buy it uh, a little bit below so a couple hundred dollar difference but you know if you're pushing over 130 pounds you might want to consider the 200 okay um, if you're under 130 pounds you can get away with the 100 probably for a year or so uh, as a learning curve depending on your age and stuff like that um, you know the age of your children so there you go pretty cool Coleman BT 200X uh, thank you guys so much and please like subscribe leave a comment let me know what you ride uh, thanks